Hey there. So in this video, we're going to be talking about linear models. So what is a linear model? Well, in short, in simple terms, it's basically a graph that shows a line. So is here it says here a model that shows an equal change over an equal equal interview. And this is often represented by a linear rela relationship in the form of y equals mx plus b. Don't worry, you're not going to have to know this. Uh, I know you. So a lot of you guys have done this in grade 9, and uh, and you're probably sick of it. So I'm not going to ask you to make any equations based on this. But you're going you're gonna to have to do some graphing. Okay, so and what is the rate of change? In short, well, the definition here says the amount by which one quantity changes relative to the change of another quantity during an equal interview interval. So, for example, something like this, monthly cost. If this, when this, cha this change relative to the energy would be the rate of change. So how much this change in comparison to this change. So one thing's changing in comparison to another thing. And the best way to understand these problems is to actually, the, the best way to understand these concepts is to actually do the problems. So, uh, let's do example one. So basically this first example is uh, an electric company. It says here, uh, electrical energy is sold in units called Shelley's electric cost energy, kilowatts per uh, kilowatts hour. Shelley operates a horse uh, boarding stable. The graph show the graph shows the monthly cost for the electricity to consume to operate the stable. Okay, so describe the relationship. So as you can see here, it's a straight line. So you would say that this relationship here is linear. Okay, let me just write it in. Maybe this is pretty light. Maybe a little heavier. Well, this is good enough. Estimate the cost of 200 kilowatts. So, Simply, we look at the graph and we look for 200 kilowatts. Uh, I'm going to use a red here. So over here, we look down here. The bottom root represents kilowatts. 200 is right over here. Now I'm going to put my pen pencil down here. And just go up. And let me just make this a little bit more easier to see. There we go. Oops. And it goes across like that. So right here, oops. Right at this point here, that point there. Um, so estimate the cost. As you can see here at 200 kilowatts going across is about 50. So here you would say it is about 50 dollars at 200 kilowatts per hour per hour okay is the rate of change is the rate of change of cost with respect to consumption increasing constant or decreasing. In this case, as you can see the line, the line is going upwards from left to right. Now when you're whenever you're reading graphs, you always read a graph from left to right. And from left to right is actually going up. So you would say that this is increasing. And just so you guys know, if you want to know what constant looks like, constant looks like a straight line. That's what a constant looks like. And decreasing looks like a, a line that's going downwards. Okay. Let's take a look at the next one. It says here, how does the cost change each time the consumption goes up by 100 kilowatts? 
Okay, so let's take a look at our graph. So you can choose any point that's going up by 100 kilowatts, but I think the easiest one from zero to here. So it goes up from here, from here to here. I'm just going to draw it going up here because that's 100, that's 100 kilowatts right here. Oops. Let me just undo that. And if you look, it should be right here. So this is 50 here. That's 50. So this is 45. So at 100 kilowatts right here, that's 100 kilowatts, it goes up. And at this graph, it go across, and I can say this is 45 right there. So how much does it go, go up by every um, every hundred? It goes up by it goes up by um, forty dollars. The cost goes up by forty dollars per. You can say per, or you can put the dash per hundred kilowatts. So for every, so basically it goes up forty dollars for every kilowatts. And to prove that, if you look here from two hundred to three hundred, three hundred is here. You go up. So if you look at the cost, the cost at two hundred is above fifty dollars, and the cost at three hundred is, if you go across it, that should be an estimate of fifty five dollars. So yes. Oh, so my mistake. This is wrong. That is wrong. That's my mistake. Let me uh erase that here. Let me just get to this. Get my eraser. Oh, let me find my eraser. Actually, it might be easier just for me to scratch it out. Uh, wait, hold on. Comment eraser. Oh, there we go. Let's erase that and let us get the red. Let's put over here five. Because here it it goes up by five from here to here. So from from here to here, from here to here, that's a hundred kilowatts. So from here to here, so it's at 40 and it goes up by this much. So five, $5 for every 100 kilowatts. And you can see that over here as well. Right here is at, it's at 50, uh, $50. And if you go by, if you go by um, 100 kilowatts, it goes up only by five. So it becomes 55. So from here to here. So it goes up five. Uh, $5 for every 100 kilowatts. We hope that makes sense. What are suitable units for this rate of change? Okay, that's an easy one. All you have to do is look at the the what the units are. So here is dollars and down over here is uh, kilowatts per hour. So you would say the rate of change this units, the units for rate of change is dollars per uh, kilowatts hour. And uh, yeah, that's about it. The why, um, the units, the rate of change for the units will always be this unit over this unit. And that was that will always be the the units for the rate of change. So it's the y units over the x units. Okay, let's look at the next problem. Okay, so we have an aircraft here. We have uh, the Diamond Katana is a popular training aircraft manufacturer in London, Ontario. The capacity of fuel of the fuel tank is about. Um, 19.5 gallons. The table shows the amount of fuel remaining in the tank during the flight. Now, luckily, I believe they give us a graph. Well, actually, it says here to draw a graph, so you can probably have to draw a graph yourself. But I, I didn't want to draw the graph, so I put the graph here. So here's the graph. 
And um, a couple things should stand out. Like this is this is a linear graph, and you can see it's going downwards. So it's a decreasing. It's linear because it's straight. Anything that's straight is linear. So it's a linear graph going downwards. And the first thing you should you should do you should always use a ruler, but you should do a line the best fit. So and then to extend the line all the way down. But we'll do that a little bit later. Describe the shape of the graph. The graph is a linear graph. Linear, straight. Oh, this or linear. Oops. Let me go back. Linear line. linear line uh, that goes downwards again we always when we look at graph we always we always interpret the graph from left to right so from left to right it is actually going downwards or you can say this is this decreasing, the slope is decreasing. So maybe I should put that down here. So the slope is another word for rate of change. That's all it is. So you can say the slope is decreasing. Or you can say the slope is negative. Or you can say decreasing. It says there how much fuel was consumed during the first hour of flight. Well, let's take a look. Okay. So the first hour of flight. So this is half an hour, and the first hour of flight is here. I'm just drawing a line that goes up to those dots. Let me just go up here. So it goes up here and then goes across. So the, for the first hour of flight, so from here to here, the fuel went down. The fuel was initially 20 and it went down to 16. So it was here initially. Hmm. So it was initially here, and it went down to 16. Okay, let's take a look. How much fuel was consumed during the first hour flight? Well, 20 minus 16. From here to here, you can actually you can actually do another one here if it's if it's easier to look at. So from here to here. It went down by minus four gallons. Gallons is because this this is here is in gallons. So it went down minus four gallons. So how much fuel was consumed? About four gallons. During during the first hour of flight. What is a reasonable estimate of the rate of change? Well, the rate of change, okay, the best way to do the rate of change is to choose two clear points and get the difference of those in those two clear points. So I'm looking at this line. I think a nice clear point is this one here. So I'm going to use this point. And a nice uh, point I'm going to use is this point right here. Oops. I don't know why it always does that. This point. Oops. This point here. I'm going to use those two points. So, and the slope is often expressed as m. Let me write the points down first. So the first point was zero at zero time, and I believe it was at twenty. And the other point was at one uh one hour, 
and I believe it went down by 216. So those are the two points. And uh, you want to show the change. So this is this is this is the um, the first point, and that here is the second point. And we should always do the second point over the first point. So, and the we do the y. So this will be um, sixteen minus twenty. So that's a change. That's a change in fuel. The change in y. The change in fuel over the change in time. So time is 1 minus 0. Again, we always do the second point minus the first point. This is the first point. So the second point minus the first point. That will give us negative 4 over 1, which is essentially, uh, that's basically, which essentially is 4. So the rate of change is 4 gallons over uh, one hour or just or just hour you can just say hour you don't have to say one hour you can say gallons per hour or just hour okay here's a tricky one determine the length of time that the aircraft can be flown on one tank of fuel now, there's a lot of ways of doing this. You can pop this into a graphing calculator, and it will give you the answer to that. Or you can make an equation of a line. It can also give you that, but making an equation line is a lot of work, and you have to remember your grade 9 math. Or you can simply just do the simple way what a lot of people do, is just make an estimate, basically an educated guess, by extending the line downwards. So, over here... If you extend the line downwards, and you should use a you should use a, a ruler for this, because if, you, if it's if you're using doing freehand, then it's not gonna it's not gonna come out well. Let's use black. So over here is four. I believe here is four point five. Over here is five. Oops, let's go back one. Let me write that again. Let me just put that on here. 4, 4.5, there's 5, and this is 5.5, and over here is 6. It should be at 6. If you use, if you use a, a ruler, it should hit at 6. If you use a ruler, it should go at 6. I'm not using a ruler, that's why it's off, but if you use a ruler and do a line the best fit, it'll extend to 6. So, this is the, probably the easiest way for you guys to do it, is to draw a line of best fit. They just extend the graph downwards and see where it hits. At zero, it hits here at zero fuel. So, basically, you have zero fuel at 6 hours. So, you can go down here and so determine the length of time. Uh, so, basically... At, well, let's put this in red. At six, oh, at six, uh, sorry about that. Six hours, at six hours, there, um, all the fuel is gone. There is no fuel left in other words um one tank of one tank of gas one tank of fuel only lasts you six hours okay and i i'm i'm not gonna make the the test or quizzes like overly complicated and in all likelihood they're gonna come from the examples and from the homework and they're gonna be pretty be pretty straightforward and simple because in real life a lot of these problems are not complicated, so I'm not going to make the the assessment as complicated as academia. I'm just going to make it pretty straightforward and simple. Okay, that's about it.